Where have you seen this kind of energy in a live performance recording? Answering such a question may be difficult to many listeners. Some would just say that this is garbage and is not a proper recording since it is barely comprehensible, but undeniably energetic. And this is what Death Grips has to offer. You know Death Grips, right? That bands that leaked their own album with no authorization of their record label, which caused them to be the most legally pirated band on the planet, having their albums torrented over 34 million times, according to BitTorrent in 2012, and also plastering a penis as the cover of the album. If these weird acts don't ring a bell, just watch this 10 second clip. All this weirdness coming from one single band. How can they do it? And how did it start? Wonders I'll try to answer today. Come, come, come fuck apart here. here. Uh. Come, come, fuck a part in here. Ah. Uh. Flight 12. Rider cruising out, controlling slot confusion like we're blowing mystic zoning through the gates. Rolling wild like mistakes, manipulate another vicious track to waste the enemy without a trace. Everything is down in place. Old and unknown times, when Stefan chose for an undecipherable stage name as well as song structure that predates Death Grips unlike any other. A very quiet vocal performance under this nightmare feel type of simplistic beat sets the tone to the unfiltered mysterious video that came along. The date of recording to this video is unknown, estimated to be around late 90s and early 2000s. Info around them in this era is very scarce, leading to an archive website seemingly owned by the band Fire, of which was Stefan's band at the time with G Rider and Swank, to Bandcamp, where every album is freely available for everyone's enjoyment. The lyrical direction was set for Stefan, same as the sound atmosphere. We just needed the right ones to make them. And they were coming. Ever saw a man hitting a drum snare faster than an Uzi? If not, behold Zack Hill. Now, unlike Stefan, Zack was no stranger on the music industry, being part of over 28 projects predating Death Grips, with 11 different groups, as well as 3 solo albums, all predating Death Grips. And even then, the Madman found extra time to do visual art, surprisingly alongside Stefan with his hobby. But his main focus seemed to be the group Hella where he stayed with till Death Grips formed and released 5 albums and 7 EPs, since then demonstrating his inhuman ability to play the drums at an insane pace, as seen in their live performance. Despite how mysterious Stefan is, Zack has a clear pass to the public, however, one from the trio surpasses Stefan in mystery. This is where I struggle the most, because this guy is surrounded by nothing, quite literally. Info on when, how and where he started form or took part in any of Death Grips' history is so little that it feels like he purposefully avoided any connection to the internet for the moment that Death Grips started. 
So little is archived and so much digging is required to find anything. That's when I have a big thank you for the Death Grips Reddit for being an excellent source of reliable information. So, I'll tell you what is known. Andy was involved with Zack seemingly since the beginning, as a archive SoundCloud page from 2011 and an old YouTube channel holding the same name as the SoundCloud page shows, to the point of making a micro cameo in one of Zack's early music videos, having his laptop broken by Mexican Girl who some of you may recall appeared as a guest in the track Lord of the Game in Ex-Military. As for connections with Stefan, none are visible. Now from Andy's side, no. A lot of speculation surfaced after the release of Ex-Military and it only grew bigger with the release of The Money Store. It wasn't until September 2017, six years after their mixtape, that we finally got the shortest story as to how Death Grips came to life, in form of a reply by one of the many accounts owned by Andy, in which he states that Zack founded Death Grips, recruiting himself and Stefan, who apparently was Zack's neighbor at the time. Late 2010 and in March 8, 2011, they released their first set of tracks under the Death Grips EP. Accidentally, possibly intuitively, says the anonymous respondent to our interview questions. It was the first time since 1638 that the solstice and the lunar eclipse had occurred simultaneously. Quote from Death Grips' first interview, as the track Full Moon Death Classic was released on YouTube. Alongside came a dot .zip file including 7 tracks. Yes, 7. It's mostly known to only contain 6, 3 tracks that went on to be included in their upcoming mixtape, but allegedly the track Blood Creeping Grave Rips was there in the old zip files. Now the track isn't added anymore, but fuck the files, let's talk about the noise. And there's a lot of noise to talk about. Cock the barrel, trigger rain, swerving donuts gets the grain, I blame those rider rips the brain, kaleidoscopic bullet train of a gay just a clutch! Yes! <laughs> Just from what you heard, it's safe to say that Death Grips' sources for sampling are strange and seemingly random, to say the least. But they always find a way to twist it to the best, or worse, depending on the way you perceive their music, which is simply insane, triggering various reactions on the first time listener, and rage is most likely a common one, as the rough metal guitar chords jump in the beat, with a slow jam beneath it and the vocals of Nancy adding to the atmosphere of being in a bar located in the bad part of town. You knew you were in for a hell of a ride once MC Wright took the wheel, or should I say, the mic. A mindfuck of energy comes from Wright's loud and angry voice with disoriented, confusing lyrics certainly require reading for a few understanding. And you will look for Death Grips lyrics. Few words can fully describe what they sound like. But for every track, there's one feeling. The other tracks present the same weirdness, and this would be the expected norm for any Death Grips track to come in any near future. But it also shows how peculiar their sampling methods and choices are, with wild samples included but not limited to a codec printer.
face melter. Cock the barrel trigger right. In 1986, 3D animation. Less than three seconds of a rock song. And much more. They've said their style clear for everyone in three words chaotic, innovative, and amazing. And this would go on on their upcoming mixtape. But it's too early to touch on that. Yet. Their introduction to their material was already discussed. And just like the No Love Deep Web ARG states, there's more to come.